Hi guys, Andy Rag here, Golf One Alpha Whiskey. Welcome back to the channel. This is another amateur radio video. This time it's the DX Commander Expedition version. First impressions. Stick around. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so hopefully by now you'll have seen the video I did on the uh, the Soto Beams 10 meter pole and now you can use that uh, to uh, to basically recreate the DX Commander All Band Vertical Classic. So, I've been a customer of Callum's now for some time, obviously since buying those bits, and uh, just recently I've become involved in Callum's uh, Discord community and uh, started to make a lot of new friends there. Uh, some excellent chaps and uh, having a, a really good time online. So, what's this video about? Well, this video is about the uh, the 10 meter expedition. Obviously, Callum's aware that I'm the UK rep, for want of a better word, for Parks on the Air, and uh, I do a lot of outdoors portable operations. So, after a bit of a chat on the Discord channel, I ended up with a DX Commander. 10 meter expedition version. So what's it all about? Here we go. Okay guys, I've just uh, adjusted the camera a little bit just to give me a bit a bit wider of a shot. So uh, what we what do we get in the uh, in the DX Commander 10 meter expedition kit? Well, firstly, you get the pole. As you can see, I'll just lean back a bit so I get this all in shot. Right, the pole a big fat stove. Really well packaged. And this is like literally the first time I'm going into this. So, bear with me. So obviously he doesn't want these things getting damaged in the post. There you go, one DX Commander Expedition pole in a nice, it's like polyester bag. Almost reminiscent, wrong, reminiscent of a, uh, a fishing rod. But there we go, one DX Commander 10 meter pole. Next, DX Commander M0 XXT QSL card with a personalised moniker. Thanks very much, Callum. That's the second one I've got. A little instruction book, or a little instruction sheet, should I say, saying if you want RTFM, go to that link and just watch the sharp edges on the metalwork. You get a box, you know it's for the expedition because it's got an X on it. And in that box, lots of goodies. Well, there's a the chew. <laughs> Blue lined each rink, some funky paracord, and I've just dropped a lot of bits all over the place. Uh, clips. Jubilee clips, not as many Jubilee clips. I think there's just the uh, yeah, well, there's, I can see three in there. Three Jubilee clips. Dongy doing it. U W M P E. I think I've got that right. <laughs> Spreader plates. Some small pieces of different diameter tubing, obviously for the top of the pipe. The driven plate or the radiating plate, the radial plate, SO239 pigtail, 
and a filtered nuts, bolts, plastic clips, etc. And that's it. What I would say is that the all the uh, all the fittings are premium quality. Your A2 stainless bolts, the fork connectors or the spade connectors, whatever you want to call them. These are really good quality. I've had some. Of, I, I bought some of these myself off uh, off the usual uh, fast shipping sites, and uh, the thickness of the the contacts there isn't great. Obviously, you've got your blue terminals for your radiating elements and your yellow terminals for for the uh, for, for the the radials, where you've got obviously uh, four or five or six wires all bundled together. So you need. A you need a bigger, a bigger hole. The snap together plastic clips. Now, quick note on these: once you've snapped them together, they're a real pain to get apart. So make sure that you only fit these right at the end when you know that you've uh, you've got it right. And wing nuts and washers, and that's about it. All that's left is this stuff. Right, so this is the DX10 wire. And I can tell immediately just by looking at it and the way it feels, that it's much, much different from the D10 wire that I'm used to using, both in the military and with my Orban Vertical Classic that I built earlier. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing a side by side comparison on this. Uh, so uh, we'll we'll have a look at the uh, the two wires side by side just in a short while. So everything you need, everything you need to build a lightweight portable antenna system. Now, hopefully, this thing will be able to fit on the side of my field pack. You know the one that I built or put together recently and uh, was the star of one of my most recent videos? Yeah, that one. Well, hopefully that end will fit in the uh, in the radio pouch that I'm using to secure my current 6 metre travel pole. And this will take its place. With the upshot being that I won't need anything else in that bag other than maybe uh, a 2.70s antenna and uh, a HF antenna and this is going to be it. So that's the plan. Whether I've got enough room in that bag is another matter but I could always get another bag eh? Anyway we'll leave it there for now let's have a look at the wire side. Right so the wire side by side so this is the DX50 it's a lot more supple than D10 um, uh, probably because this is just pure copper inside whereas uh, the old army D10 is a mix of, uh, of coated copper and steel conductors um, this is just a single piece of insulation I don't know whether that's going to focus in because it's tracking my face but, uh, but yeah it feels softer, it feels nicer to work with Whereas this stuff, <laughs> anybody that's ever come across this stuff in uh, in the wild knows knows what I'm about to say here. It's, I mean, just look. It's springy. It's nasty. It's quite stiff. But don't get me wrong. It's extremely good wire for using outside, but sometimes it can be a little bit too good for its own use. But uh, I've used this stuff for years. Um, on and off but if you want to lay a piece of wire on the ground and you want it to lay flat in one direction forget it because this thing's got a mind of its own it's got a real memory to it that it's nice for keeping it coiled up like that but trying to get it to lay out straight oh just don't bother um, so if you want something nice and robust that you can keep taut using 
other means then great use a bit of D10 we used to use it for all sorts like tying stuff <laughs> uh, but this this is really nice wire practically no memory effect in that if I, if I strain it out it will actually lay straight if I, if I bend it like that it will bend but it, at least it goes where you want it to go so that's nice and it just it feels softer in the hand and uh, looking at the specs of this wire uh, it's, it's actually army grade uh, guarantee for arctic conditions so it's going to be decent stuff yeah nice one Cal good find okay that's the wire let's crack on right so included in the box of stuff is this little sheet obviously the link there tells you where to download your manual and this is it very nice manual, well it's not a manual as such but it's a very nice set of instructions well laid out, well presented um, tells you everything you need to know to build the system how long the elements need to be some tips for assembly etc etc and it's only six pages long uh, also includes some technical information on the 40 and 15 meter conundrum so there you go yeah Callum knows his stuff he models it in, uh, in software first and then he goes out and he builds it and he tweaks it as necessary so let's hold it there for now next video is going to be the, uh, the build and, uh, and the deployment so thanks very much for watching Take care everybody, thanks for liking and subscribing on previous videos and we'll see you down the log as we say in amateur radio speak. Thanks again, catch you later.